if you use these technologies and understand how to optimize them in the right way, and you embrace the new technology and take a lot of pride in what you're doing to learn it, you're going to outperform your, your own self and you're going to outperform your team from the traditional ways. Initiating becoming a hiring machine sequence in three, two, one. Hey everyone, it is Sam Keenly and Matt Chambers and welcome to Becoming a Hiring Machine. This is the show dedicated to fixing recruitment by going beyond saying what needs to change and instead teaches you how to make the change. Today, we have an amazing trending topics episode ahead of us, but before we get into that, just wanna tell you a little bit more about the show. Essentially, we have shows within the show. Sometimes we're going to have interviews with industry leaders and others who are shaking up the space and they're going to teach you something that they do that's helped make them successful. Sometimes we're going to have trending topics like today, items that recruiters are talking about or will be very soon and what those mean for them. Every Tuesday, we're going to drop a Tactical Tuesday episode where we go deep on how to do something that will help drive better results in your day-to-day. Sometimes we're going to open it up for Q&A. Listeners can drop in questions that they'd like to hear us take on. Send those over to us at podcast at loxo.co. And every now and then, you're going to hear a a mic drop episode from Matt where he's going to share something that's top of mind about the recruitment space and and things that that you all need to know about. So uh, today, Matt and I are going to talk about AI, chat GPT, what they mean for the recruitment space. At this point, I'm sure that you've heard everything across the spectrum from AI is going to replace recruiters to AI and GPT shouldn't be used at all. Success is going to continue to only be found on a one-to-one personal level. So chat GPT continues to surface as one of the trending topics in our realm, especially around how to use it as part of your outreach sequences, whether that's candidate outreach, business development, anything like that. So uh, we always recommend do your own research when new practices are shared with you. But today we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about what we're seeing, things that we think you should know. So uh, Matt, looking forward to, to this episode. I've got a, a handful of questions that I, I can't wait to get your thoughts on for this. Likewise, I can't wait. I think uh, our team alone, when we released uh, one of these features, we've been talking about it. There's more interest internally, I think, than any other product we've had in the last couple of years. So uh, a lot of interest around this for sure. So we're excited. I believe it. And you're having a number of conversations with with prospects, with customers. Um, I mean, what what are you hearing right now? Is there any hesitation around chat, BG, chat GPT? Are people excited to use it? Are they asking you how they should be using it? Like, what, what's kind of the pulse been? Yeah, uh, great question. So uh, there's more buzz around uh, generative AI, I think, than anything that we've, we've ever seen. Uh, and it's exciting, but I think I think the draw to this is actually more apprehension and anxiety. So recruiters are really excited to leverage it, to understand it, to be aware of it, uh, understand what ramifications there are, and um, we can kind of unpack that. But I also think there's just a fear factor of you know, is it does it have the potential to replace some of the job tasks that recruitment and recruiters are doing? So tasks. I mean, what are, I know I've got a handful of different use cases that I've seen. Um, Yeah, I mentioned a couple of them just in the the teaser here a little bit ago, BizDev to Canada Outreach. What are some of the the initial use cases that you're seeing recruiters use these? And then we'll get into, you know, are those the right ways or are there other ways that they should be thinking about them? Yeah, so the immediate ones that, and you're going to start to see a lot of companies popping up that will offer solutions for this is uh, with the outreach piece. And so obviously when you have to send emails or follow-ups and that could even extend into SMS text messaging or like WhatsApp down the road. But if you think of across the recruitment life cycle, anything that touches the surface area that is text-based has text copy will have generative AI capabilities. And, And it's the applications within recruitment are both broad and deep. And what I mean by broad is you could have if you break down step-by-step process from creating a new job description, um, that takes a lot of time and you can actually ex- use machine learning to extract and historical job descriptions and help provide templates. And uh, that might not sound that great for some people because it's generic, but it just speeds up the process, right? So everyone's worried about personalization and things becoming too generic. Uh, it just It's a tool to speed up. And so job descriptions, outreach, um, then you're going to start to get into more sophisticated uh, pieces over time, further down the life cycle, and that you know it depends on where you are. High volume recruitment, you could even get into interviewing uh, candidates and uh, Q and A back and forth with people who apply. 
you know, all the way through the end of the life cycle. But those are some of the main kind of core ones that are people are starting to talk about. Yeah, I like that. And and one of the things you said that really stuck out, it's these are tools to help you speed up. So I think that's something the the early adopters that I've seen use this well have been using this is the the zero to 80, so to speak, if you're going up to 100, where, you know, build a nine step sequence for me, they pop that in, then they know that it's not going to be the the final product, they're going to go in and review it. So it's taking away that initial like creation and getting you into editor mode. So now you use that expertise, the knowledge, the skills that you have to tweak that to make it better, but it, it expedites that process, like you said. So um, yeah, getting getting that initial outreach. And I know a couple other use cases that I've been I've been laughing at. I subscribed to uh, an AI newsletter. And one of the ones that, that they were talking in there was the flip side of it for the candidates. They were talking about how to use it to build a resume, how to build a cover letter. And I was cringing a little bit at some of it because they're almost gamifying. You know, it's like take the job that you want to apply to, then plug that into ChatGPT, have it build and construct your own resume and cover letter. And I don't know, maybe that's a conversation for another time. I know it's getting slightly off track, but yeah, there's a there's a, a wild variance, I think, that are going to come out in use cases for how these are being used in the recruitment space. Well, yeah, it, and I don't even think it's getting off topic. It's uh, we were we were laughing uh, at another leadership meeting the other day. Uh, an important piece of uh, email that came through. We were reading it we're like it was very verbose, really long. We're like, oh my god, this was generated by ChatGPT. You just know everyone sees it. So, you know, is the whole world going to adopt this in all parts of their workflow? Uh, and also, is there a certain skill? Just going back to people knowing how to communicate. So I don't know, it's important in not just the recruitment sector, but every sector to kind of understand how to utilize this in the right way. Yeah, so, all right, I think this is a good segue. We'll we'll start with what's the downside of using this poorly and then we'll get into what's the upside of using it <laughs> well. So downside of using it poorly is people clearly have a detector where they can, they can tell that doesn't quite seem like it was written by a human. Like, tell me a little bit more about that and other, other ways that you've seen that. <laughs> what's the worst thing that can happen, right? That's... um. You know, I, I think uh, in in our sector, in the recruitment sector, especially retained search firms or the very high end, have always been uh, a little hesitant to adopt technology just because you have it's so personal and you you can't afford to make mistakes. So the downside of using poorly, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go back. This is sales is the same way, and you, you're from the Martech world, sales tech. Everyone used to reach out. Uh, you would cold call people, right? And the very first predictable revenue model that popped up when you first did sequencing, everyone's like, we're not going to ever upload a list of prospects ever and sequence them. And then that's just how you reach out initially anyway. You can't afford to ruin a prospect, right? And so people evolved with tech. It got better. Uh, the downside of using uh, generative AI techniques or outreach GPT with recruiting is you can ruin a relationship forever. You can embarrass yourself. You can come come across and just mass spam people on the wrong role. So it's like anything. It's uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. Do you care? Are you going to just bulk send without looking at it blindly? You're not a professional. Um, if you use these technologies and understand how to optimize them in the right way, and you take and embrace the new technology and take a lot of pride in what you're doing to learn it, you're gonna have you're gonna outperform your your own self and you're gonna outperform your team uh, from the traditional ways. So that's it. But poorly, a lot can go wrong and every <laughs> on every step of the process. And um, you know, it's not just the outreach embarrassing yourself, but also you ruin relationships forever, clients, candidates, and your own team. Yeah, that's <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of potential downside not to scare people off from it, but it's things to think about before you just go and adopt, you know, new shiny things. Should I go and do it? think about second order, third order effects. Are you going to really use it? Or are you just going to kind of check the box? So those are um, some great, you know, tactical things to be aware of. One other thing that um, I, we've we've addressed as we thought about this also is from an operational standpoint. So when you use this, the data that you are inputting into, if you're using chat GPT specifically, that then goes over to the, the owner of the large language model. So in this case, open AI. So you need to be very careful about what you're putting into it. Um, so I think it's interesting because of how we approach this. So um, do you want to tell me a little bit more about like we have a product that we just rolled out, OXO Outreach GPT, but it's not actually integrated with GPT, but we use the name because people understand GPT 
the the AI, how it builds out. But um, tell us a little bit more about you know how we built our own large language model, coupled it with AI, so that we can use it in a way that makes the most of technology, but also respects and and understands the data privacy concerns. Yeah, and I actually I know we just got out of the meeting. You might you might be able to articulate this letter. Uh, better than I I can. So I'd love to hear your version first, and then I'll I could, I'll share mine if that's okay. Yeah, perfect. So <laughs> I'm I'm laughing. Um, so the marketer in me is immediately going to say, "Then why did you include GPT in the name?" We did it because people have that mental model already. They understand. Okay, if GPT is in it, like okay, I, I get that this is going to be an AI tool that's going to allow me to put in an input, and then it's going to provide me with the outputs in a in a written format. So what our team did was. It's not really GPT. We built our own large language model. GPT is a popularized type of a large language model. So the key reason why we did build our own is, is, is data privacy. At the end of the day, we don't want anything that's being put in there to go over to a company, OpenAI or others, because it's unaccessible by then. So given the nature of the data that a lot of recruiters use um, and keep in, in like their Loxo database, it would be a huge breach of trust and privacy if we allowed that data to flow over to another company, especially without their consent. So um, that coupled with, we knew we could build a large language model that was built specifically for recruiters instead. So instead of using something that that could work, we wanted to, to build our own. So um, what this essentially looks like is we take that, the AI, and then we emphasize three key inputs from recruiters, the job title that you're hiring for, the hiring company, and then the job description. And so what we're able to do is take those elements uh, and then all of the the inputs from the large language model, and then it can tailor that into creating a, a much more tailored outreach sequence, things that are, are relevant to all the information that you have, but it's done in a way that is compliant and and you don't have to worry about you know breach of contract data trust or, or any of that coming back to you so that's my my marketer spiel to it what did i miss from from your higher level view that's why yeah i should interview on these um that you, you said it really well i i think a, a big reason why our cto is uh so passionate about making sure that we do build our own we're big proponents of open source uh what we've been seeing with open AI in particular, we're excited by, but yeah, you don't control it. And again, the data privacy is not something that our customers would be comfortable with. We're really excited to build our own. We can control that irregardless of how technology evolves over time. And we have, we tap into many different uh, solutions and built it from the ground up. So uh, yeah, it, and it's just a, it's a big philosophy we have internally. We're huge open source proponents. Everything we do is built from the ground up for that reason. Yeah. So not a plug for Loxo, but those are the things that you should be thinking about as a recruiter when you go to use these AI tools, just understand where is this data going that you're putting into the system and and is that okay at the end of the day? So why why we preface this with do your own research first and then hopefully we can help you to to ask the right question. So uh, enough of the scary talk, how to what happens if you if you use it poorly. Um, the upside of using it well. So I think you started to touch on it earlier, you know, it's a tool to help you speed up different things. So what are some of the other upsides that you see for recruiters? Yeah, well, we're passionate about this. I'm a I'm a tech nerd, as as you know, Sam, and the company knows. Uh, there's massive upsides that we, we wouldn't have offered this if we didn't know and see it. So you, the beautiful part of out, an outreach product and talent intelligence is that you can build pre build a sequence. And more importantly, it's not that it's not running at one time. It's looking at the data it's understanding and breaking down your workflow and saying, once we identify a, a perfect mutual fit candidate or long list, we now have to reach out. And you look at historically, how is that done? It takes a lot of time to build a really nice template per search, per person, to tailor that, to follow up, to draft those emails. And essentially, most recruiters are, already have a whole library of saved templates. So essentially, what you're doing is you're jumping ahead and saying, let's pre-build these per uh, search assignment. Well, when GPT can help generate that uh, entire follow-up process for you sequence, and then you can just tweak and tailor it and, and save it. And then you can use that template and then basically A-B test those templates every single search over time across your entire organization. If you have one recruiter, you still will save a lot of time. If you're really high volume and you have hundreds of recruiters, just imagine how quickly you'll have an entire department, just like modern marketing teams and companies that will focus entirely on just building uh, high-impact, 
sequencing that basically gets the results, which is high open rates, high reply rates, and then recruiters can do what they do best rather than worrying about being content machines. Yeah, I love that. And one stat I remember you shared me with when I first started was it was something like 90% of recruiting behavior is spent on sourcing and outreach. That seems like a lot, especially for an industry where the best recruiters usually like you want them talking to the candidates, talking to the clients. That's where they really shine. A lot of recruiters aren't necessarily Boolean writers by trade or are people that have copywriting backgrounds. So being able to take a tool like this where it helps lighten up some of that. So instead of you know 90% of your time on it, maybe it's only 60% of your time because it writes those first drafts for you. And then from there, you can, you can even play with it. Um, we're going to have a, an episode with another member of our team, Vivian, who goes deep on how to really use ChatGPT to, to write effective uh, emails and, and outreach sequences, but it's like, hey, make this a little bit funnier, make this more professional, make this punchier, instead of the canned templates that are, hey, hope this message finds you all. I have a great candidate, and it just sounds buttoned up and boring. There's different things that you can do that that allow you to have a better conversation because your first touch point with with prospects or with uh, candidates traditionally is in written format. So if you blend in with everyone, if you sound like everyone, usually you're it's going to be hard for you to stand out. So it's a great opportunity to really uh, showcase, you know, your skills, make it seem like you are the no brainer choice. Like I absolutely need to work this with this recruiter to find my next candidate, or they're going to help me find my next role. Yep. And I, we actually, you, you're, you asked a question about what we're hearing right now. Uh, it's funny that a lot of the recruiting organizations are asking for those type of buttons and features that allow you to tailor the kind of tonality. Um, which I think is is phenomenal. Uh, we have we have certain opinions on that as well, but um, the, a lot of uh, companies are actually asking the same thing. Tonality is a big a big aspect of personalization. Yeah, and that's something that I think was was really interesting to learn. And I know I did this when I first started with ChatGPT. Was I would go, I put the prompt in, and then I would be like, okay, that's the final output, the first response. It's it's not Google though. You have to treat it as a conversation where it gives you the output and you say, this is a great start. Now make it funnier or make it shorter, make it longer, incorporate this data point a little bit more and keep iterating off of it. So you can guide it to where you want it to be. And it's going to learn when you keep it in that same thread. So um, yeah, I think that's, you know, if you want to use it well, that's where uh, I think the way that it was best described is pretend that it's a really, really, really smart six-year-old where it's going to do what you tell it, but you have to tell it exactly what to do, how to do it, and it will get there. But you just have to keep providing it with those inputs. Yeah. And one thing to keep in mind, technology partners are important. One, one downside that OpenAI and these uh, LLMs have that are agnostic for industries is they have to build it for everyone. Whereas vertical specific solutions like uh, a purpose-built recruitment platform can actually build them, incorporate uh, very specific use cases that happen in recruitment, which is why uh, vertical solutions will have a, a, a huge advantage over GPT is not going to be able to build a recruiting-specific solution and a sales-specific and a customer success and this. So uh, yeah, these topics will kind of flush themselves out over time, but I'm most excited by that because what you see today is not going to be the end-all be-all. It's going to evolve very quickly and machine learning will help improve uh, the outcomes and tonalities and, and everything that we've been talking about. Yeah. So as we wrap this up, the way you phrased this earlier, I absolutely love, I'm going to tee this up for you because I think that it was such a perfect response. Should recruiters be concerned about GPT replacing them? Gosh, you put me on the spot, aren't you? <laughs> you you referred uh, to it in a very specific way. Like, think yes. about, yeah. So, no, absolutely not. Uh, and and a, a better way to to respond to that question is: should should we as as humans be, uh, you know, intimidated and concerned about technology replacing that our income and our jobs? To and no, uh, just like any technology that's evolved. If you don't evolve with the times and you're not willing to learn and improve your vocation, then you're going to fall behind. That's it. Uh, it's going to take a really long time, but you're going to get better. And the reason why it's really exciting is uh, it just moves recruiters up the value chain. If you don't add value, if you're just there to push buttons and not think, then yes, you should be concerned of your job. <laughs> but if you care a lot and take pride in your craft and you want to get better at it with the tools you have available, your peers and competitors have the same tools, get ahead of them. 
ad adopt them, uh, embrace them. In the next two to five years, you're going to make more gains than any of your peers and competitors because you're those compound. And, and so that don't be concerned about it, fall into it. And it should be an exciting decade ahead. I love it. So sounds like those with the growth mindset, nothing to nothing to really fear. So great. Well, this was fun. Um, as always, yeah, enjoyed the conversation with you. Anytime that I get a chance to talk with you on the show, um, I know I appreciate it and that the, the audience definitely will. A lot of knowledge here in this short episode. I, I hope that it inspires some recruiters to start incorporating this, both the best practices and thinking about the potential downsides as they move forward. So um, yeah, so that's the show. That was a, a, a solid trending topic episode here with Matt. So until next time, everyone. Mm -hmm.